Hey, it's Joel, the 3D printing nerd, and in front of me right here is the Ultimaker 2 Plus 3D printer provided by Matter Hackers. Thanks a lot, guys. I really appreciate it. I've had this machine for a while, and I've printed some things with it, and I think it's time for me to tell you a little bit more about it. So let's do this. Are you ready? Go. <laughs> Ah, welcome back. So here's the Ultimaker 2 Plus. And I've had this machine for a few months and I've had the chance to print a few things. And well, it was just time for me to tell you about this machine, but, but it's been on the market for a little while. And I need to tell you things about it without parroting what other people have to say. I, I need to add to the conversation. Can I do that? I don't know. Let's find out. First, let's get into the Ultimaker 2 Plus specifications. It features a build area that is 223 by 223 by 205 millimeters, which is 8.8 by 8.8 by 8.1 inches. The bed goes from 50C to 100C, and it's glass, and it'll get there in under four minutes. It's a Bowden-style extruder, and at the end of that hot end is a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, but it also comes with a 0.25, a 0.6, and a 0.8 millimeter nozzle because it's got an Olsen block. The nozzle itself will go 180 to 260 C and it'll get there in around a minute. It'll also print PLA, ABS, CPE, CPE+, PC, nylon, and TPU. Last but not least are these sweet LED lights in the frame of the Ultimaker. I know that this doesn't improve your print quality, but if you're like me and you like to film time lapses of your prints, these lights are invaluable and it turns this Ultimaker into a light box. What's great is these LED lights are controllable from the menu screen. So from the menu, you can turn them on and off, on and off, on and off, on and off, on and off. Now that I've introduced you to the Ultimaker and told you its specifications, let's take a look at some of these prints. Hey, look at this. This is the Eiffel Tower printed in Matter Hackers Pro PLA and the Eiffel Tower turned out incredibly well. There's a little bit of droop when the filament was doing an overhang here in the archway, but uh, it's easily cleaned up and the stringing that I left could be cleaned up with a heat gun. The sides are good. The top is good. This is a good model. Who could forget Chaos Cortex bob -omb figure? And look at that. The sides of this model are extraordinary. The Ultimaker's 0.4 millimeter nozzle did an amazing job with the sidewalls of this bob -omb character. It's a slight curve all the way down, and it's nothing but perfection from the bottom to the top. Yes, I know, my eagle, well, its wings have been clipped, and that's because I dropped it, because I'm clumsy. But I can show you this model because the back and the front of the eagle and the sidewalls look great. This is a ColorFab bronze fill material, and other than the wings missing, this is a good model. It's stuck to the build plate well, and the, the printer just handled it. It just did a great job with this model. I'm sorry about the wings. Kaka. This gun was a collaboration between multiple printers here in my household. This is Tracer's gun from the game Overwatch. And all of the black parts that you see on this gun were printed with Matter Hackers Pro PLA and then joined to the other parts of the gun. And it came out pew pew extremely well. ColorFab released a flexible engine material and usually flexible materials are hard to print on a Bowden style extruder, but not the engine flexible. And here's my little maker coin that I had designed in Fusion 360 and it turned out great. Uh, word to the wise though, it sticks like crazy. They recommend build tech and it's stuck to the build tech like you wouldn't believe. I, I highly suggest uh, you, you check your settings and you slowly remove it from the build tech. But this is incredible material and I've got some cool videos coming up about it. But until then, check that out. The last model I wanted to show you is this Maker Coin, but it's using Angus from Maker's Muse three-dimensional lattice infill. This was printed with ColorFab's HT material and uh, the, the material itself is, is a great material. It's got a good translucence. It kind of glows. And I'm not... It kind of shimmers because of the, the way the material interacts with the light. Uh, this material will grab on to your glass build plate. I highly suggest adding down some PVA glue just to guard against it because when I removed this coin from the build plate, it also took tiny bits of the glass bed with it. And so that's why I flipped my bed upside down. 
All right, I'm gonna tell you a few things that I think stand out about this printer. The first one is the assisted bed leveling system. The bed is leveled manually and there's no automatic bed calibration on this machine. However, the machine tries to assist you in the way it levels the bed. And it's incredibly easy to level this bed. Even if you have to add a build tax sheet or a flex 3D plate to the top, there's no issues. You just perform a few simple procedures and re-leveling the bed is taken care of. It's by far one of the easiest manually leveled beds I've ever used. The menu system on this Ultimaker is up here on front and there's an iPod-esque click wheel that takes you through the menu system where you spin the wheel left or right to get through the menu system and then pushing in on the click wheel activates your selection. I found the menu to be easily navigated. I found it to be sorted well and I had no problems using it. The Ultimaker 2 Plus includes the addition of the Olsen block on the hot end, and that allows you to interchange nozzles quite easily. It comes with a 0.25, a 0.4, a 0.6, and a 0.8 millimeter nozzle, and those, those nozzles are, are interchangeable when the nozzle is heated up, and then you can use a small little socket to take it off and put the new one on. My friends at Micro Swiss also make plated nozzles for the Ultimaker, and if you need to, they can send you a plated nozzle set for your Olsen block on your Ultimaker 2 Plus. They also happen to throw in a 0.5 and a 0.3 millimeter nozzle. That's awfully nice of them. And finally, I kind of wanted to call out the build quality of the Ultimaker 2 Plus. It's built incredibly well, and I can see how this machine specifically would be really good for high-use environments like makerspaces or educational facilities. If you're going to have a lot of people using this without the availability of downtime, this is built for it. All right, I told you some good things that stood out. What about the bad things? Well, uh, honestly, there's nothing <laughs> really that stands out about this machine. The, uh, I guess I could call out the Bowden tube and uh, the extruder setup. In order to insert filament, you're supposed to ins insert it through the back where the, the geared motor is, and then you wait for it to appear in the Bowden tube, and then you hit a button and it fast forwards that filament, jamming it into the hot end. If for some reason it gets a little too far into that Bowden tube and you, you advance it using the button, then it's going to jam the filament into the hot end and keep driving grinding away at the filament, creating a space, and then you have to pull it out, snip off that bit, and try again. Uh, even though I point that out, I did that literally once, and it was the first time I loaded filament. Then I learned from my mistake, and I haven't done it since. So I can't really call that out as too much of a negative. In the end, this is a very well-built 3D printer that produces incredibly high-quality prints. The assisted bed leveling is extremely easy to use and allows you to add different build surfaces if you need them. And the Olsen block with the interchangeable nozzles allows you to add a nozzle if you want finer detail or if you want to push more plastic through it faster. If you think the Ultimaker 2 Plus is the right printer for you, I've put some links down in the description where buying through those links directly benefits my channel. Hey, thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. If you found this video useful at all, smash that big thumbs up button. Please subscribe if you're not already subscribed to my channel so that you don't miss out on any future content that I produce. Big thanks to my patrons who support me at patreon.com without their financial support. There's a few things in this studio that just wouldn't be here right now. Finally, if you have any questions or further comments, please leave them in the comment section down below. And finally, hug each other more. I love you guys, as always. High five.